Yankee Farber, a very close friend of the podcast, joins us from B'nai Brock to discuss the looming hostage deal. Yankee, good morning in Israel. It's good to see you. Good thank morning. You. Yes, thank you for working out some technical issues that we had earlier. And uh, here's the question. Initially, the hostage release was supposed to begin today, Thursday, and it has been delayed until Friday. And there are reports that Hamas never actually officially signed the agreement. Do you have any idea why it was delayed? Well, you know, it's very complicated. The Israeli media um, published a lot of things, but um, Hamas never signed the deal. And also, they haven't given full um, information about um, the 50 hostages they want to release, um, women and children. Um, they didn't give names. They didn't give exactly details about them. Now, the Israelis are not sure if they didn't give it either. They have, they don't have it. Be, um, or they just want to, you know, they want to carry on playing around with, right. the, with Israel. And they Hamas claims that they don't have all the children and all the women uh, with them because, you know, as we know, some of those women and children were not kidnapped by uh, Hamas. They were kidnapped by just plain, regular, um, as what we call uh, innocent civilians who also joined um, yeah. the, the massacre, yeah, the massacre on Simcha Story, and they all, and, you know, just civilians walked into the villages, killed um, and kidnapped women and children. And Hamas says, I, it's impossible for me to find them because we are under the tunnels and we are spread all over. A lot of Hamas members died, got killed. So they just say, we don't really know. We need time to find them. So first you have to stop the fire so we can find all those people. In the meantime, we'll send you what we have, as we say. But the Israelis don't want it. So no, 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 no. We want to know exactly who are the people you're going to give us, uh, their conditions, um, and where are they going to be brought, and, you know, all details. Hamas has not given all the details. That's very, very interesting. Now, the question I think everybody's concerned about is what is Hamas's real motivation? Because a lot of people believe if Hamas is willing to release 40 or 50 hostages, then even though they're getting prisoners back, but the ceasefire must be extremely valuable to Hamas. And the concern is, the fear is, that will they use this to gain an advantage? How much can they regroup in four or five days? Could they do real damage? And if not, then what is their motivation? Well, seriously, um, I read yesterday, I mean, to, last night, um, that the Israelis, they, they, they all say, we don't really know what Hamas wants. Because Hamas doesn't care about the hostage, the prisoners that he's going to release from the Israeli prisons, because all of them are going to stay either in Jerusalem, in East Jerusalem, either in the West Bank. None of them is going to Gaza. He doesn't care about the people in, in, in prison, in the Israeli prisons. Actually, it's more safe for the Palestinian prison to stay in the Israeli prison than to go to Gaza. But, uh, you know, they can get killed there. Right. But he wants time, as you say. He wants four or five days to reorganize himself, maybe to check who, is, who was killed, who is still alive. I don't think he has, um, as far as I understand, there's such a big mess in Gaza. Nobody really knows what's going on. So he just needs a few days to reorganize himself and maybe actually find the rest of the hostages. Um, so um, the Israelis are worried that Hamas will get reorganized, but they say at the same time that they are ready for it, prepare for it, and that's not going to be a big issue. Nobody really knows what Hamas wants. We have to remember we are dealing with a, with a, with a, with a guy, Ikhya Sinwar, that for him killing people is like, you know, for us uh, having breakfast. So yeah. we don't really know. Zinwar is a vicious monster. Well, that's the fear. And again, number one, you know, I want to point out it's a it's such an incredible bracha. Mir Hashem, these hostages should be released, all of them, and certainly the children and the women, three-year-old Desavi Gail, who has stolen everybody's hearts, who our hearts break. You know, she 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 her father perished while he was on top of her. She hid under him. I mean, the stories one after the next. We're all sitting here wishing, but at the same time, it, it's a grueling decision. Hey, let me play. I have a clip. I have to find it of uh, of Danny Ayalon. Uh, saying that this is a very difficult decision. I don't know if you saw the op-ed 
from Yossi Yoshua, military correspondent for Yudir Akronot. He wrote a scathing op-ed. So he, he says, I'll quote it here, the same government responsible for the biggest failure in the country's history is pushing this deal, saying it has no choice but to accept it. But the enemy is a ruthless murderer, and they know how to exploit Israel's Israeli society's soft underbelly. So he really is thinking that Hamas might be outsmarting us again. Well, I, I read what he said, and, you know, even the people who agree with him, they still say one thing. The Israeli government has a responsibility to get all, all civilians hostage, hostages back. I'm talking about civilians, men, women, and children. We are not talking about soldiers that were kidnapped. Uh, probably around 50, 5 or probably about 50 soldiers were probably killed. Nobody really knows the number, but uh, quite a lot, you know, like, 30, 40 soldiers were kidnapped. So they say, well, you know, when it comes to soldiers, with all the pain and everything, soldiers knew where they're going, and it's different. But when it comes to women and children, Israel must pay everything to get them back. Once they're back, we can start, we can carry on, you know, destroying Hamas. But we do have responsibility for women and children. The Israeli army, the Israeli government, the Israeli society, whatever you want to call it, failed by protecting them. So first we have to get them back, no matter the price. And actually, you know, the price is, it's not so bad at the end of the day. If you remember, Israel gave back 1,200, uh, uh, Israel released 1,200 uh, Palestinian prisoners. Some of them, Ikhya Sinwar, people like Ikhya Sinwar, you know, yeah. murderers. So for once, Gilad Shalit, for one soldier. So what right. are they now asking? 150? A young Palestinian who didn't kill anybody. I mean, they tried to kill. And you have to remember, all those people that the Israelis are supposed to release, they're all staying in East Jerusalem or in the West Bank. So Israel can, uh, you know, can control them and, and, you know, follow them and check what they're doing. And if they do something wrong, they can either get arrested or either get killed. Um, none of them is going are going back to Gaza. So... It's right. different than, you know, the Gilad Shalit story. And I don't think it's so bad. But what Yossi Yeshua is referring also is the way that Israel is actually going after Sinwar. Instead, Sinwar should beg Israel to stop. And, you know, he should come out from his uh, tunnel with hands uh, up. But I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows. People are talking so much. People are publishing so much. People are, you know, journalists. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, you know, um, you know, journalists, not just people on WhatsApp. They publishing and he said this and he said that and nobody really knows anything. Yeah, no, that's clearly true. Are you concerned? You're talking about how the their prisoners are not going to be released to Gaza. They're going to remain in East Jerusalem. Some people feel that that's a bigger threat because we know how many attempted terror attacks come from people crossing the checkpoints who are in East Jerusalem coming into the other side. You think that's a better scenario where they're going to be brought to East Jerusalem and be so close? Well, well, you have to remember most of them live in East Jerusalem, their families are in East Jerusalem, so they're going back to their home. So, um, not, but again, I think, I don't know what, um, you know, the experts in the Israeli um, the security all officers think, but I think that it's easier for the Israelis to look after and check after everyone that was released um, if it's in East Jerusalem or the West Bank, because if, if we know most of those um, murderers, if they would go to Gaza, you couldn't really control them. So it's better if they are in East Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And again, most of those people, I mean, all of those people um, didn't kill at the end of the day. I mean, they tried. Um, they injured very badly people, whatever, but because they didn't kill, so, you know, it's something easier to accept. And at the end of the day, it's not so bad. You know, 50 women and children uh, are worse for us much more than 150 young Palestinian and oh. um, brainwashed uh, uh, teenagers. Every life is so precious. This could be such an incredible, incredible Yeshua. Um, do you have any idea, I haven't heard much about this, how many American hostages are set to be released according to this hostage deal? Uh, well, first, like, let's say 50 women and children. So 50, how many Americans? But Oh, American. Mm, oh, sorry, I missed the word American. What I understood, there is about three 
uh, Israeli American um, hostages. I'm not sure if they're all children. I know Avigail, um, uh, age three, uh, President Biden uh, is pushing a lot that she should be on the list. And I think I read yesterday that she she's going to be on the list. And I think another two, what I understood, but again, it's not really up to the Israelis because, you know, Hamas can just tell you, well, I'm sorry, I don't have these two Americans that you want. I only have one American that you want. So, and what? Are you going to say, okay, so let's not do the deal? No, you're still going to do the deal. But um, I understood three Americans. Yeah, um, that's what they're that's saying. Really- but does that surprise you? I would have thought that President Biden would have put pressure on Qatar, on Hamas to release. No, because- they believe there are a lot more Americans being held. Yes, but but those Americans, first of all, they probably not uh, women and children. They probably like men, so right. they are not the first on the list. And also, we're not sure if those Americans are only Americans, not not Israeli Americans, because Israel said that they're not going to uh, get back any foreign uh, any foreign man, any any foreign kidnap, because first they need to take care of the Israelis. So it doesn't really matter if the Israeli Americans or or American Israelis, it doesn't really matter. It's just um, if somebody is Israeli, even if American, he should be released. So President Biden, I know, pushed a lot about these three-year-old girls that actually all her family were murdered. But um, well, two brothers, two no, two brothers so, were hiding in the closet. Two brothers were hiding in the closet, yeah, amazingly the parents, they lived. Yeah, but, but the, the parents, parents were. Died, yeah, um, no, it's horrible. So yeah, so I heard three. Now, if Hamas is actually going to release them. Nobody knows. They can just change their mind in the last minute. You know, yesterday, the head of the Mossad uh, was in Qatar. He flew to Qatar. He came back empty, as we say, with no list of the people that were supposed to be released. So it's very upsetting. And people in Israel, a lot of people in Israel um, say that um, Israel should, you know, give up the deal and start attacking again and again very, very badly Hamas. Till they're going to, you know, surround it or something. But um, you know, I don't make the decision, so it's, it's easier. For impossible. Me. Yeah, exactly. Impossible decisions. It, these are decisions that are unthinkable that anybody could have, have to make. Uh, is there going to now, be? No, I, 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 I want to say something important yes, uh, when it comes to when it comes to Haredi, because yesterday um, the Haredi Knesset members from Shas and from uh, United Torah Judaism. They went to Rabonim um, to ask. Uh, I know Moshe Lelirsh, Reb Dov Lando, and also I think Rabbi Itzhak Yosef from the Sephardi community. Uh, they asked, "What should we do? If we should vote or not vote?" Oh wow! Nefesh, not Nefesh. So they went to um, Big Rabonim, and um, actually all Rabonim said the same. You know, there is a Sephardic and there is a Vadai. So there is a there is a fact that those people are in danger, those women and children. Actually, their families, some of the relatives of those kidnapped, came to uh, Remoish Hillel, Irsh, and to Rebdov Lando. Um, to, to, first, they came for a broche. They're not religious anyway. They came for a broche, and yeah, they I also saw that told video. the rabbi. Their yeah, not, so not came, religious families came to Rebdov Lando for, for a Wow. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Fascinating. Yes, and they asked, and they told the rabbis, please put pressure on the Knesset members of your, they should vote um, for the deal. So the rabbonim said, I mean, I don't know if they spoke with each other, but they all said the same. Um, there is a vadai that those women and children are in danger. And there is a suffolk that maybe the people that were going to be released from the Israeli prison will do another uh, um, terror attack. So if there is a Suffolk and Vada, you go on the Vada, and you have to release them. So they said, and they all, and all Knesset wow. uh, Israeli uh, member uh, voted um, for the deal. Um, actually, also uh, the other Knesset members, you know, they're not Haredi, but the religious from the Tzionut uh, Adatit, they also voted um, for the deal. But I don't think it's because of the Rabonim, it's because of other issues. But right. uh, the Haredi, they all voted for the deal because... Um, because the Rabonim told them to do it. But that's so incredibly comforting that the decision was made ultimately by Das Tyra. I have not seen that anywhere else. I, I saw the, the video of Dev Landa with the, I was wondering what they were doing there. And uh, 
You're saying they were begging. Wow. And Rodolfo Valenda was crying. I mean, it was a very, very emotional, powerful video. Do you, are you concerned yeah, now? Said, yeah, continue. But please. He said, he said, um, he said on the video, he said that it was so hard for him to see it and, and he couldn't take it. He said he was so upsetting to see and hear about those women and children and kidnapped. That he, he made him a such a bad feeling, like he put his hand on his on his uh, on his you know on his stomach, he, like he went like this. Oh, it was so hard for me to see it. And he's like you know he's age nine uh, ninety eight or something. Wow. So wow. whoa, I, it could be also dangerous for him. You know, he's not a young uh, man. Wow. And uh, I don't know. I hope I hope uh, at the end of the day tomorrow there will be um, you know at least. They, I, I listen. If you ask my opinion, I don't know how much my opinion is important because. I don't have ability to say anything, you know, to change anybody's mind, but I think Israel should do everything and even pay everything to get the women and children. Because, yeah. and obviously men, you know, civilians, because they they should not be part of the conflict. But when it comes to soldiers, with all the pain, I think, and everybody says the same, Israel must attack and attack and attack Gaza until we find them. I hope alive. I hope so. Of course, we all hope. We all dive in every every day. I mean, not that you know the little that we can do, we don't do enough. Probably. Um, are you concerned? And I hear your. I hear what you're saying. Your opinion is very valuable to me. You're somebody living, you know, breathing this. You're not only in contact with everybody, but you're seeing so many sides of this. You you have a very unique perspective because you are so connected to the Gedolim, to the Haredi world. So. And and to Das Torah, so it really, really means a lot, not just to me, but to our to our audience, to a lot of people. Are you concerned that there's going to be pressure, that the momentum shifts, that after four or five days of a ceasefire, Israel wants to resume the fighting? And I believe they will, but is there going to be a lot more pressure now? Oh, you see, it lasted a few days. Hamas is then going to dangle, you know, the possibility of more hostages. So is that a concern that Israel well, if, is going to have if, enormous pressure? No. So yeah, I well. No, not really, because if Hamas will agree to release more hostages, then Israel will carry on with the ceasefire. Another day, ten, another day, another day, and um, but eventually, let's say maximum a week, Israel is going to uh, go back to fight so strongly, but this time till the end. Till the end. So you don't think that Sinwar is going to have a chance to? They say he's going to get out there in public. He's going to galvanize. He's going to. Motivate his people. And I, don't, I, I, I don't, don't think it's a concern. I don't believe. It. I okay. don't believe he's going to get out, because if he's going to get out in the public, the Israelis will. It will be much easier for the Israelis to find them afterwards. The so I don't think he's going to go out. That's a very good point. And you know, Gaza, Gaza, Gaza is basically. I mean, um, north, northern Gaza, is like destroyed. Every building, every building in the northern Gaza, was hit by Israelis. So most of the buildings, it, it, you have to, you know, destroy them and build new ones. Um, probably, look, in Gaza, there is about 2 million people who live, and not, it's like 40 kilometers, um, that's the whole place. Um, for probably all Gaza is destroyed. Um, even in the east Gaza, uh, even in the uh, sorry, in um, um, uh, what's called um, South, South Gaza, even South Gaza, yeah, that Israel is not attacking yet. A lot of places are destroyed, and Israel will destroy uh, Yunis. Israel is shooting um, all over Yunis. Yunis is in the south, and I believe that when all these hostages uh, situation uh, will be done, Israel will finish up Gaza. Uh huh. Now, and you... by the way, by the way, yeah, by the way, this is important. Yesterday, yesterday, uh, Israeli journalist uh, from Channel Twelve, El Diari, he's a uh, he's a very very um, he's been doing uh, well decades um, being a journalist, and he speaks Arabic, of course. And he said he published on Channel Twelve very interesting um, thing that um, Arab. Muslim leaders, Arab leaders, even some people from the Palestinian Authority spoke to Hamas leaders, not the one in Gaza. It's impossible to speak to them, but the one in Lebanon or in whatever, um, Qatar, yeah, Qatar. And they Ania. told them, yeah, they told, Ania and Masha, they told them Masha, they yeah. should surround them. 
they told them they should surround it, give up. Surrender. And yes, they should surrender all weapons they should put down. And they, they, and they said they will be part of the Palestinian government in the future. They said to them, Israel is going to destroy you. You will have no chance. They're going to destroy all Gaza. So if you want to save the Palestinians' life, and the rest of Gaza that, that, that was not being destroyed till now, just put your weapons down, surround yourself, and stop fighting. Wow. And um, yeah, I don't know who, but I, I don't, if you ask me, I don't think uh, Sinwar will uh, do it. And not Ichiyash, whatever. Um, and, uh, because. And Michelle and Hania, they don't care. They, um, have their, they have their billions of dollars. They don't care of so, all the Gaza. Yeah, Ania, Ania. No, also Ania and Mashal, I, I don't think they will do it because um, it's like if they're going to do it, whoa, so they lost and uh, whatever. I think they're going to fight till the end. I hope they're going to fight till the end. <laughs> now, uh, yeah. I, do, now, do you think that the war, the ground invasion is going as planned? And do you think that Bibi Netanyahu, that his days are numbered? There are reports that, you know, that uh, the Israeli public is not happy with him. And that maybe even within no. the that Netanyahu could be removed. Do you think that's a chance? Well, the public is not happy with him. Everybody failed in this government. Everybody failed um, in the Israeli army. All intelligence failed, and they're all going to go home straight after um, the war. There will be election, and Netanyahu is going to go. Nobody wants them. We're not. I mean, nobody's doing anything now because we are in a war and we're not changing our leaders in the middle of the war. They all failed. Now, Netanyahu can say, maybe he's right. I got the information from the intelligence. I got the information from the ITF. And I acted according to it. They told us that Hamas is weak. He doesn't want a war. And we have to focus on Iran, on Hezbollah. And um, Hamas um, it doesn't want a war, and everything is okay. Maybe he's right. You know, they gave him the information, and he acted according to it. But at the end of the day, he's the leader. Think about it. If Netanyahu would be, um, you know, a chairman or a manager of a big company, he would be fired on simple story morning. Um, so he failed. Because he's in charge. Now, and you know something? Netanyahu has been in power, like, I don't know, about 20 years. So Very long time. Hamas became, yeah, so Hamas became big and strong and powerful on the Netanyahu. On the Netanyahu. So Netanyahu can only blame himself. Now, if I don't know if somebody else would do better than Netanyahu. We saw Bennett made big mistakes. Yeah. Bennett published on 2022 that he was proud, actually, of it, that m thousands of Palestinians are coming in from Gaza every day to Israel to work. Let's give them jobs. Let's give them money. We all know that a lot of those uh, workers, as we call innocent civilians, who are Hamas members, and they took all information from the south of Israel, and they actually helped. They gathered uh, Hamas. Help. They had oh, mass. incredible amount they of mass. military bases and all some, all sorts of schematics and blueprints and the wall. Everything. I'll tell you more. I'll tell you more than that. I saw many times. I don't think today, but not not long ago, two, three, four years ago, I saw Palestinian working in Israeli army bases as builders with tractors. And we always ask, why don't you think that this guy is going to collect information wow. about our base? How many soldiers are here? How many soldiers actually carry weapons? You know, not Insane. all soldiers carry weapons. Yeah, it's crazy. Not all soldiers carry weapons. Uh, so he's going to take all the information and just pass it over to Hamas. And this is not a secret. Everybody in Israel knows that many Palestinians used to work in Israeli army bases. And we always said, it's crazy. They can just collect information. So um, wow. so that's why, we, that's why we also say that there's no innocent people in Gaza, but that's a different story. Um, I'm not happy 
um, and I'm not dancing and celebrating like Hamas do when I see women and children and oh, dying in Gaza, getting killed, getting killed in Gaza. Well, Hamas is using them as human shield, but we have to remember most of the people who live in Gaza support Hamas. We can see it all the time, everywhere. On the streets of Hamas, every time when there is a terror attack in Israel, they all go on the streets and celebrate. So they are part of Hamas. Um, so what, what, for your question, I think that after the war, everybody's going to go. Not just Netanyahu. The chief of staff failed. Um, the top of the intelligence, the Israeli intelligence failed. The head of the Shabak failed. They, they said it. They said it. We failed. But now there's a war, we have to fight for it. We're right. not going to change them now in the middle of the war. But after the war, they're all going to go. Now, Netanyahu, now there will be election. Now, I can guarantee you that if Netanyahu is not going to go by himself, if there will not be election, um, you know, uh, straight after the war, millions of people are going to go on the streets in Israel, including right wings and many Haredi people. Um, were fed up. Um, basically, I, don't, I know our people love Netanyahu and everything, but at the end of the day, the majority of Israel is fed up with Netanyahu. You can see it on the polls. Gantz is getting about 40 seats. People don't, you know, 40 seats. Um, Bennett wow. is getting about 18. Lapid, 15. Um, Ali Kud, in the last poll, he got 17 seats. So, you know, Gantz can actually form a government with Lapid, Lieberman, and the Likud without the Haredim in the government. And I think this is what's going to happen wow. after the war. I didn't think that. The Haredim are going to be up. Yes, they will make a government without Haredim and make a big change make a big, big, big change about, um, you know, how the government is going to look, the Haredi will be out probably. Wow, I didn't think of that part of it. Yeah, but okay, look, and I've been a big fan of Netanyahu for many, many years. He did amazing, amazing things, but yeah, like well, said, nothing can justify or excuse this. I mean, uh, you get well, to he failed, pay the price. He failed because um, Hamas, under his um, leadership, became a monster. Right. It's a good point. It's not about October 7th. It's about the years of buildup prior to that. Yeah, it's not about October 7th, exactly, because it's not just Netanyahu's fault. I think, actually, that um, it's more the Israeli uh, intelligence fault, the Israeli army fault. Netanyahu um, is, at the end of the day, listening to them, but and, and he does whatever they say, what they advise. But at the end of the day, Hamas was growing up to a monster under Netanyahu's leadership in the last 10, 15 years. That's why Netanyahu is going to go, if he's going to, if he likes it or not. Yeah. And I also think that, and I also think that um, we should make a law that you can't, you cannot be more than eight years a uh, prime minister, you know, two uh, terms, because when somebody is getting too much, he's just losing it. Yeah, you see that again and again. It, it happens every time. It's a great point. They need somebody fresh, somebody to come in and prove themselves. Too much power. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Uh, any other thoughts? No, I think we covered everything. We covered it. Yeah, get excellent, excellent job as always. We appreciate this so much, and people really do, and we need it. We need to really connect with you. Legendary journalist, uh, Haredi journalist, Yanki Farber from B'nai Brak, giving us a really incredible analysis. Thank you. Hope to see you, Bez Hashem, soon. See you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank Take you. Care.